بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس آئی ایم ڈاکٹر محمد علی ہاشمی ٹیچنگ یو دا سبجیکٹ آف میکینزم آف آرگینک ریئیکشنس دس لیکچر از اباؤٹ دا ڈیلس ایلڈر ریئیکشن اینڈ اٹس اسٹیریو کیمسٹری سو وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ایکسپلور دا ڈیلس ایلڈر ریئیکشن ان دس لیکچر اینڈ دین ویل ڈسکس اٹس اسٹیریو کیمسٹری مینلی So the key concepts you are going to learn in this lecture would include uh, a very brief introduction to pericyclic reactions. We'll uh, describe what are pericyclic reactions uh, very briefly and then we see what are the main types of pericyclic reactions. Uh, and then uh, we move on to the cycloaddition reactions uh, whose uh, type is the Diels-Elder reaction. So Diels-Elder reaction comes under the cycloaddition reactions. And then uh, we discuss the stereochemistry of the Diels-Elder reaction. So first of all, pericyclic reactions. What are pericyclic reactions? Pericyclic reactions uh, are the reactions which occur by a concerted cyclic shift of electrons. What does that mean? A concerted means uh, which is a, a single step reaction. So the first thing in this definition is that pericyclic reaction is concerted. So in a concerted reaction, reactant bonds are broken and the product bonds are formed at the same time without any intermediate. So the first thing is that this reaction occurs in a single step without any intermediates there are no intermediates involved there is a transition state uh, which directly leads to the product so the second thing in this uh, above definition is the cyclic shift of electrons so pericyclic reaction involves a cyclic shift of electrons which the, and that is a necessary condition Uh, if there is a not a cyclic shift of electrons, we can't classify that reaction as a pericyclic reaction. So the word pericyclic means around the circle, as we'll see on the next slides. So if we compare the Diels Elder reaction and the SN2 reaction, They are both uh, concerted reactions, but uh, only the Diels-Elder reaction occurs by a cyclic electron shift. Let's have a look at this SN2 reaction. So that you can see that this is an SN2 reaction. It is happening uh, by a concerted single step. So uh, you can see the reactants, the transition state and the products. There is one step, no intermediate involved. but what what is the difference between this SN2 reaction and a Diels-Elder reaction that is that there is no cyclic electron shift involved in this SN2 reaction let's have a look at the Diels-Elder reaction uh, on the next slide so the Diels-Elder reaction is a one-step concerted mechanism similar as SN2 reaction but uh, here is a cyclic electron shift so in this reaction you can see a diene there are two double bonds so this is a diene it is an electron rich system and this is an alkene where one single bond is present so this is called as a dienophile this is electron poor compared to the diene so you can see that these pi electrons move here this one move here and this one move here so there is a cyclic shift of electrons uh, which makes this reaction a, a pericyclic reaction so there is one other thing about the pericyclic reactions that they do not require any other uh, materials or reagents they simply occur in the presence of heat or light so pericyclic reactions usually don't require any extra reagents they occur in the presence of heat or light so the diels elder reaction is a pericyclic reaction but the sn2 reaction is not 
there are three major types of pericyclic reactions uh, so these are the main types and you can definitely go into details into subtypes of those so the first one is electrocyclic reactions cycloaddition reactions and sigma tropic reactions they might also be called as sigma tropic rearrangements we'll see on the next slides so the first is electrocyclic reactions an electrocyclic reaction is an intramolecular reaction of an acyclic pi electron system in which a ring is formed with a new sigma bond and the product has one less pi bond than the reactants so uh, let's have a look at the example so this is an uh, this is an intramolecular reaction so you can see that this is the reactant the reaction is happening just uh, inside the molecule itself so it's an intramolecular reaction this reactant is acyclic pi electron system so what is happening that there is a cyclic shift of pi electrons which creates a new sigma bond so this uh, this uh, magenta colored bond is the sigma bond which is uh, newly formed and that closes the ring as well and uh, the product has one less pi bond than the reactant so you can see that the reactant has three pi bonds but this product has only two pi bonds so this type of reaction this type of pericyclic reaction is called as electrocyclic reaction next is a cycloaddition reaction so cycloaddition reaction is a reaction of two separate pi electron systems so see the difference between the electrocyclic and the cycloaddition electrocyclic was uh, an intramolecular reaction but cycloaddition is a reaction of two separate pi electron systems in which a ring is formed with two new sigma bonds and the product has two fewer pi bonds than the reactants so you can see uh, that there are two reactants here one is a diene and the other one is a dienophile there is a cyclic shift of electrons and we get a product with two new sigma bonds and two less pi bonds than the reactants so the reactants have uh, one two and three three pi bonds but the product has only one pi bond so there are two new sigma bonds created which close the ring so this type of reaction is called as cycloaddition reaction and the Diels-Alder reaction we are going to discuss further is a type of cycloaddition reaction that comes under cycloaddition reactions. The third type is sigma tropic reactions. So, what is a sigma tropic reaction? It's a reaction in which an allylic sigma bond at one end of a pi electron system appears to migrate to the other end of the pi electron system. So uh, you can see that uh, this is an allylic sigma bond. What is an allylic position? Allylic position is a position which is present on the next carbon directly attached to the double bond. So this is a uh, double bond, an alkene uh, double bond. And uh, this carbon is attached to this double bond directly. So the, the groups attached on this carbon will be called as uh, attached on the allylic position so you can see that uh, uh, this allylic sigma bond at one end of this system will migrate from here to this position and uh, the pi bonds change positions in the process but the total number is unchanged so sigma tropic reaction is basically a rearrangement or a shift of a double uh, a sigma bond so the number of pi bonds remain the same but they just change their positions you can see in the reactant a pi bond is here but in the product it has moved to this position similarly this one has moved to this position and uh, this sigma bond moves from one end of the molecule to the other end so these type of reactions are called as sigma tropic reactions next is the Diels elder reaction so the reaction between a conjugated diene and an olefin 
olefin alkene, which is also called the dienophile, to form a substituted cyclohexene was correctly formulated by Otto Diels and Kurt Elder in 1928 and intensively investigated by them. So these scientists originally uh, discovered this reaction between a conjugated diene and a dienophile or an alkene which uh, creates a substituted cyclohexene. So um, these uh, in the next year this reaction was uh, considered so important that it has become one of the most fundamental and useful reactions in synthetic organic chemistry and in rec recognition of the importance of this reaction the discoverers of this reaction that is Diels, um, Otto Diels and Kurt Elder they were awarded Nobel Prize in 1950. So the Diels Elder reaction has proven to be a very useful synthetic tool providing one of the best ways to make six membered rings with diverse functionality and controlled stereochemistry. So in synthetic chemistry, these are two very important things. The, uh, one is the creation of six membered ring. Uh, that is uh, quite an important reaction. And then you create it with diverse functionality and controlled stereochemistry. That is very important that uh, you make something uh, with the correct stereochemistry you want and Diels Elder reaction is a very beautiful reaction which gives you uh, a good control over the stereochemistry of the products. So the Diels Elder reaction is also called a 4 plus 2 cycloaddition. Why? Because a ring is formed by the interaction of 4 pi electrons in the diene with 2 pi electrons of the alkene or alkyne. So uh, four pi electrons come from diene and two pi electrons are in the alkene which combine together uh, and the reaction is called as 4 plus 2 cycloaddition reaction. Since the electron poor alkene or alkyne is prone to react with a diene, it is called as a dienophile. Dienophile may be uh, uh, called as lover of dienes. That is that uh, this uh, alkene loves dienes because it is electron poor compared to the diene and uh, diene is an electron rich system which tends to share electrons with the um, electron poor dienophile and uh, that uh, is the main cause of this reaction. In effect, the diels elder reaction converts two pi bonds into two sigma bonds. So uh, we can symbolize the diels elder reaction by using three arrows, as we have seen on the previous slide, and we'll see on the next ones. Um, you can use three arrows to show the movement of three pairs of electrons. So each pi electron has a pair of electrons three pi bonds are involved uh, in this reaction so we can uh, represent this with three arrows which show the movement of those pi bonds and pi electrons so this movement uh, the electron movement is concerted that is it it is a single step with the three pair of electron moving simultaneously there is no intermediate involved and the electron with drawing groups are sometimes present we will see what is what is their function uh, the usual electron withdrawing groups used in Diels Elder reaction are carbonyl containing groups or cyano groups. So these are used as electron withdrawing groups in the Diels Elder reaction. This reaction is like a nucleophile electrophile reaction. The diene is electron rich and the dienophile is electron poor. So one acts as nucleophile and the other one acts as um, an electrophile and simple dienes such as 1,3-butadiene are sufficiently electron rich to be effective dienes for the diels elder reaction. So uh, this this is a very simple diene and this is this has enough electrons that this can um, react in a diels elder reaction efficiently. And if there are uh, electron releasing groups present such as alkyl or alkoxy groups 
they may further enhance the reactivity of the diene. I mean, diene is an electron-rich system which offers electrons in the diesel reaction uh, to make new sigma bonds. And if there are electron releasing or electron donating groups present on the diene, they will definitely enhance the reactivity of the diene. Simple alkenes and alkynes such as ethene and ethene, they are poor dienophiles. They are not very good dienophiles. A good dienophile generally has one or more electron withdrawing groups pulling electron density away from the pi bond. So as we discussed that dienophile is an electron poor system. So um, simple alkene like these two molecules ethene and ethene, they, they are not that electron poor. So they are not good dienophiles by themselves. What happens if we add an electron withdrawing group on them? What will that uh, group do? That electron withdrawing group will pull some electron density away from the pi bond, thus making these molecules electron poor and uh, good dienophiles. So uh, putting an electron withdrawing group on a dienophile um, favors the diels alder reaction. And uh, what are uh, dienophiles? They commonly have carbonyl containing groups or cyano groups uh, which enhances their diels alder reactivity. And uh, we see on the next slide there are some representative diels alder reactions uh, which include uh, a variety of different dienes and dienophiles. Let's have a look. So these are dienes, these are dienophiles, and here is the adduct uh, product of the diels alder reaction. So you can see that this is a diene, this is a dienophile. Dienophile is having an uh, electron withdrawing group on it, which um, is uh, which helps the reaction uh, and uh, favors the diels alder uh, product. So if you look at these, uh, let's. Uh, use a pen and uh, show the movement of electrons. So uh, you can see that uh, this is a one pi electron system, this is here and the third one is here. So if you use these three arrows you, you can see that a six member ring is formed here. Similarly this is a five member pi electron system just uh, keep this CH2 uh, on top and then you can see that uh, uh, this pi system makes a sigma bond here, this comes over here and this comes over here. So this cyclic movement of electrons uh, makes up this uh, bridged ring uh, and uh, you can see that a six member ring is created. This is one, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And this is a, a bridging carbon on top, which was uh, this carbon of the cyclopentadiene. And similarly, if you look at this system, again, this is the dienophile. Here is the diene movement of pi electrons. And here we go. So. Uh, that's how these uh, cyclic movement of electrons, pi electrons, occurs and uh, we get the uh, desired product. And you can see that the dienophiles here have electron withdrawing groups which favor the, um, uh, which favor or activate the dienophile and favor the diesel di di reaction. Next, we move on to the stereochemistry of the Diels-Alder reaction. So, uh, the mechanism of Diels-Alder reaction is a concerted cyclic movement of six pi electrons, uh, six electrons. So, four of them are in the diene and two are in the dienophile. And for these three pairs of electrons to move simultaneously, the transition state must have a geometry that allows overlap of the two and p orbitals of the diene with those of the dienophile. So we should have uh, the transition state should have a stereochemistry or a geometry where the two and p orbitals of the diene they can easily interact or overlap with the orbitals of the dienophile. So that's a requirement. Let's have a look here. 
this is a the blue color one is a dienophile diene and uh, this green colored uh, molecule is a dienophile that's uh, uh, that's the alkene so w represents a electron withdrawing group so you can see that there is a double bond in this alkene here is a double bond here is a double bond by the pi, pi overlap so what happens in the transition structure in the transition structure uh, these are end p orbitals or pi orbitals they overlap with with the um, diene so you can see that this is a dienophile its p orbitals overlap with the diene and this overlap breaks this one also breaks and here is a new overlap formed so uh, the transition st uh, state must have a geometry where these two orbitals of the dienophile can easily interact or overlap with those of dienophile so this actually uh, preserves all the other stereochemistry uh, like these bonds the hydrogen and this uh, electron withdrawing groups they are preserved and you can predict the uh, pro product stereochemistry very easily and it preserves the stereochemistry in this reaction so in the product you can see that uh, two new sigma bonds are formed they are shown in the red color and uh, this new overlap that is also shown in the red color and uh, uh, the dienophile uh, it was in the green color it is attached now to the diene forming a six membered ring so the geometry of the diesel transition state explains why some isomers react differently from others and it enables us to predict the stereochemistry of the product so with the, this uh, transition state uh, we can easily predict the stereochemistry of the product what will be the uh, stereochemistry uh, in, in the product uh, if we know the stereochemistry of the reactants the diene and the dienophile so there are three stereochemical features of the diels the reaction that are controlled by the requirements of the transition state. So these are three uh, features uh, which control the transition, uh, which control the stereochemistry of the product. So the first is S cis conformation of the diene. The second is the syn stereochemistry and third is the endo rule. So the first is S cis conformation of the diene. So it says that the diene must be in the S cis conformation to react. What is S cis conformation will be discussed on the next slide. When the diene is in the S trans conformation, the end P orbitals, they get too far apart to overlap with the P orbitals of the dienophile. And uh, the S trans conformation usually has a lower energy than the S cis, but their energy difference is not enough to prevent most dienes from undergoing Diesel reaction. Let's have a look. What is this uh, S cis and S trans, so that you get an idea of this uh, whole topic. So, have a look at this diene. So, the conformation of a single bond. This is this is the single bond. Uh, I'm talking about the the one which has this uh, blue arrow around it. Uh, when, when it separates two double bonds, in which these double bonds they have a dihedral angle of zero degree, like you can see that if you look at this single bond as a double bond uh, consider it and uh, you see that these hydrogens are on the one side and these double bonds are on the same side so this this happens to a cis configuration around this single bond so this kind of bond is called an s cis it is not an actually double bond where you can assign cis or trans but it's kind of a cis bond where two double bond systems are on the same side and here two hydrogens are on the uh, other side so this uh, bond will be called as s cis and if you this bond is rotatable of course if you rotate this double bond this single bond and this whole portion uh, and this this top whole portion moves on the other side and you get this S trans conformation. And S trans conformation is actually 9.6 kilojoule per mole lower in energy than the S cis conformation. So trans conformation is more favorable. Why? Because you see that these hydrogens, are, or if there are other groups on, at this position, they will have an, uh, a repulsive interaction here. So due to that repulsive interaction, 
the preferred conformation is the S trans conformation. So now you see um, if the diene is in the S trans conformation, these end P orbitals they get too far apart to react with the uh, dienophile. So in this conformation, they are uh, in a position to make a six membered ring, not in the trans conformation. So the structural feature that will aid or hinder the diene in achieving the S-cis conformation, they will affect its ability to participate in the Diels-Zetter reaction. So you can see that it will take part in the Diels-Zetter reaction in the S-cis conformation. So whatever the features are which uh, hinder or favor this uh, S-cis conformation, they will actually control the stereochemistry of the Diels-Zetter reaction. So on the next slide, we see that uh, dienes with uh, functional groups that hinder the S-cis conformation, they react more slowly than the butadiene. So the, the groups which will not allow the diene to go into S-cis conformation, they will slow down the uh, Diels-Zeller reaction because the reaction actually happens in the S-cis conformation, not in the S-trans conformation because in the trans conformation, we studied that the P orbital gets too far apart. And the dienes with functional groups that hinder the S trans conformation reacts faster than the butadiene. Let's have a look. So you can see here, this is the diene which is locked in the S trans conformation due to this ring. So no Diels-Zelda reaction. If you move here, there is a, there are groups which uh, like these CH3 groups, they have a repulsive interaction and they will not favor the S cis conformation of this. Uh, uh, this butadiene. So these uh, groups will slow down the uh, Diels-Zelda reaction because this uh, this butadiene will be more uh, in the S trans form than in the S cis form. If we move to the right, you can see that these groups don't have much effect. This reactivity is similar to the simple butadiene. And if you move these two groups here, they they will um, favor more S cis conformation in this uh, butadiene than the S trans conformation so the deals other reaction will be faster and if you come to the cyclopentadiene it's locked in the S cis conformation there there is no S trans conformation so the deals other reaction will be very favorable so if you look at cyclopentadiene um, it is so reactive uh, in fact that at room temperature it reacts with itself uh, to form dicyclopentadiene so cyclopentadiene uh, is so reactive that it reacts with the other cyclopentadiene molecules to form dicyclopentadiene. So you can see that this is one cyclopentadiene, this is the other cyclopentadiene just uh, in a different uh, shape it's shown. If we just move this uh, CH2 group a bit to the top that will be easier to understand. So this uh, pi bond moves here, this one here and this one here. Cyclic movement of electrons, this is the transition state and this kind of uh, ring is formed. So this is the product which is called dicyclopentadiene. So uh, if cyclopentadiene uh, reacts with itself, uh, we definitely cannot store it easily. So uh, if we have to regenerate cyclopentadiene from this dimer, uh, we have to heat it to the 200 degrees centigrade that will reverse the, uh, this uh, Diels-Zelda reaction and we'll get the uh, cyclopentadiene molecule and if we have to store cyclopentadiene we can store it at dry ice temperatures so that it does not react with itself. The second uh, feature that controls the stereochemistry is the syn stereochemistry. The diels zeller reaction is a syn addition with respect to both the diene and the dienophile. Syn means on the same side or on the same face. So that dienophile adds to the one face of the diene and the diene adds to the one face of the dienophile. So uh, we see on the transition state that uh, the, the substituent do not have any opportunity to change their stereochemistry. So this is the face of the dienophile which reacts with the diene. So they, they react in, this, in the same phase. These hydrogen or these uh, W, the, these molecules, uh, sorry, these substituents cannot change their stereochemistry. They are as they are in this uh, this phase. When it is joined, they will remain on the same side. So the stereochemistry prediction is easy in uh, this uh, diesel reaction. So the following examples show the results of the syn addition. So you look at this uh, addition here. Uh, 
you get these two hydrogens uh, as as cis because they were already here so they end up in the product like this same on the above the plane because this uh, dino file will be uh, on this face and react with the diene uh, in a way that uh, preserves the stereochemistry of the these hydrogens similarly if you react this kind of a molecule you see that uh, this uh, uh, this group and this group they are trans to each other and in the products they also appear trans so this is above the plane this is below the plane you can easily uh, predict the stereochemistry and similarly if you react this kind of cis system you get a cis product here as well if you use a, a, a trans system on the butadiene so you can see that what, whatever you if you use trans system on the dinophile or on the diene you get the trans product. So the stereochemistry is preserved and you get um, uh, whatever you want in the product. So that's the beauty of the Diesel reaction. The third and the last one is the endo rule. What is the endo rule? When the dienophile has a pi bond in its electron withdrawing group. So yeah, there are pi bonds in the diene and the dienophile, but if the dienophile has an electron withdrawing group, which also has a pi bond, such as carbonyl group or a cyano group they also have pi bonds what happens the p orbitals in that electron withdrawing group they approach one of the central carbon atoms of the diene and uh, this proximity results in the in a secondary overlap which is overlap of the p orbitals of the electron withdrawing group with the p orbitals of the uh, carbon of the diene and it helps to stabilize the transition states let's have a look at the uh, at this structure so you can understand in a better way so here this dienophile has a, an electron withdrawing group which also has a pi, uh, pi bond in it. What happens that this pi electron system of the electron withdrawing group that interacts or overlaps with the uh, pi electron system of the dienophile. So you can see that this is a secondary overlap which favors this transition state so the, the reaction is normally happening uh, this double bond is moving here this one is moving here this one is moving here so these two dotted new bonds are formed getting formed and the p orbitals of uh, the c2 and c3 of this uh, system they are also interacting with the pi electron system of the uh, this uh, electron withdrawing group so that that is actually responsible for this group ending up near this double bond in the product so you can see that this c double bond o and h that ends up here uh, this position which is nearer to this double bond not on this position where hydrogen is this position is far from the double bond so the position which is near to the double bond or near to this pocket it, it will be called as endo position and the position which is far from this double bond in the product that will be called as an exo position so the influence of this secondary overlap this was uh, first observed in the reaction of cyclopentadiene because cyclopentadiene forms bicyclic ring systems you, you can see that when cyclopentadiene reacts with an alkene or simple olefin it forms this kind of bicyclic system which is called as a norbornene this this kind of molecule is called as norbornene and there is a substituent on it uh, so the electron withdrawing substituent in the norbornene always occupies the stereochemical position closest to the central atoms of the diene so this uh, uh, kind of uh, group will end up near to this double bond so this position will be called as endo position this position is called endo and the substituent seems to be inside the pocket formed by the six member ring of the norbornene so this uh, kind of uh, place is looks like a pocket and this endo group is in this pocket so this will be in the endo position so this stereochemical preference of the electron withdrawing substituent to, to appear in the endo position is called as endo rule so you can see that this is a norbornene and uh, these positions are exo positions which are far from the double bond and these positions are endo which are near to this double bond so if you uh, react this uh, cyclopentadiene with uh, this molecule where you can see that this uh, c double bond o and uh, h is farther further away from uh, from this side 
when it reacts it will end up in the endo position automatically similarly if you react a different dienophile you also get a structure where this group prefers to be in the endo position so this is called as the endo rule and uh, it is very useful rule to predict the products of many types of the Diels elder reactions regardless of whether they use cyclopentadiene to form norbolin system so even if you use cyclo, uh, cyclopentadiene in the, as a diene or some other diene that doesn't matter this rule helps you to predict the product so if you look at the following example you are using a cyclohexadiene not the cyclopentadiene but still in the product we have to follow the same endo rule and this uh, electron withdrawing group has ended up near to this double bond of the product so uh, this this product will not form where CHO is shown as exo instead this will form where CHO is the, at the endo position so that's the um, endo rule and uh, let's solve an example problem quickly if you look at this uh, reactant uh, you use the endo rule to predict the product of the following cycloaddition reaction so what we need to do is uh, this is an acyclic system so we just imagine this is a cyclic system and we imagine that the, this ring is closed here uh, with a CH2 group like this one so we imagine this system as this one and then react it move these by electrons and then see that this kind of product is formed and uh, this this is the imagined part you keep it in mind and uh, the C double O is at the endo position now we can easily uh, remove this uh, uh, CH2 and put back the hydrogens and uh, uh, remove that imagination from our minds and this is the actual product which is formed uh, it is the endo product so uh, you can easily predict um, these uh, endo products from different kinds of reactant whether they are cyclic acyclic or whatever kind of um, reactant so this endo rule helps you to predict the outcomes of the uh, cycloaddition or the diels elder reaction so this was all about the diels elder reaction and its stereochemistry i hope you you would have understood uh, most of it and if you haven't understood any of the things you can you can comment in the classroom you can ask your teachers or you can comment under this video on the youtube channel and i will still be there to help you uh, about anything so we have a few problems or exercises for you uh, to solve so you have to first predict the products of the following uh, proposed diels elder reaction there are these are six different diels elder reactions you have to predict the products so this will just help you um, to to understand uh, what we have learned in this lecture so this is kind of a practice problem for you Next, we have another problem. Uh, what dienes and dienophiles would react to give the following deals as products? So you have to uh, you have to uh, tell that uh, which kind of dienes and dienophiles will react to form these products. So products are given. You have to predict the reactants. And the last one is that uh, here you have to for, uh, apply the endo rule. So predict the major product for each proposed DLL reaction. So you have to include the stereochemistry where appropriate. So that was all about today's lecture. Uh, following were different books and references considered for this lecture. And uh, if you have any questions, just post in the uh, in the comment section or of the classroom or the YouTube channel, and um, uh, we'll help you or your teachers will help you about that. I wish you the best of luck for your studies and uh, we'll see you in some next lecture until then uh, Allah Hafiz